here we go. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Everside Questers Adventures into the Pathfinder 2nd Edition Beginner's Box here on the D&D CR Exposed YouTube channel. My name's Andrew and I will be your GM for tonight, uh, followed by my friends here of Eric playing Severish, the Lizard Folk Summoner, uh, Mike playing Blank, the Human Paladin, Scott playing Schmebulok, the Gnome Wizard, and Sean playing Krunk, the Orc Druid. And luckily, uh, Sean is back. He was unable to make last time's game due to some technical difficulties, but thankfully that's all been worked out and solved, and uh, the gang's all here. The crew's all back, so we are ready to jump back into the Pathfinder Beginner's Box. What do, what do you guys think? How's everything going here? Crunk heard rumors that his brother was in town, so we went off to run and look for him. <laughs> rumors also. So now I'm back. The, uh, the separated uh, orc brothers there, Krunk and Gruller, for those that are not aware of who uh, Krunk's brother is. Anyways, uh, does anyone remember what happened in the last time's game about two weeks ago? Uh, let's see, we got back to Otari and we uh, were pretty much just like uh, squaring things away, as it were, uh, ensuring that, you know, we had our... Uh, Supplies for heading back out again. Also, yep. we uh, saw to it that uh, the kobold got a nice job, nice paying job. Ah, uh, yes. Like bread scraps and fish heads down at the uh, fishery. Yes, I don't have a picture for you guys yet, but I will uh, bring up a picture for the viewers here to see a, a picture of uh, our, our grun, our kobold sweeper uh, of the fishery here. If I got a moment, Let's see if I can bring that up. Do we ever ask its name? Uh, name technically, I think so. <laughs> but for the viewers at home, they'll be able to see Grun here. Thankfully, uh, Hair Doctor was the one that put this together over on uh, Hero Forge. So we have a nice picture here. And I will get that ported over at some point. So the next time you get into the, uh, the fishery, which won't be tonight, I'll be able to uh, you know, show you guys. So probably next week or so, I'll have that uh, set up for you. Or, uh, you know, I'll... I'll swap it into discord there and you guys can check that out later on but yes uh as you were saying mike continue oh I, actually i was going to go off on a tangent as a joke it's like oh we're not going to the fishery you know what yeah we're just now heading to the fishery again guys <laughs> <laughs> kidding uh <laughs> oh shoot where was i uh yeah so we got run the job we accepted uh another job from uh oh my god why can't i remember the dwarf's name hang on i gotta see if it's in my notes Dwarf. What dwarf are we talking about? Or am I thinking of another campaign because it's been so long? I think you might be thinking of uh, uh, the... I think you were thinking of the last campaign we were working on. The yep. one D&D campaign, yes. Yep, okay, no, things are blending now. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh, anyone else want to continue from where Mike left off or shall I pick it up? Uh, we, we were getting the job by the, the bartender of, of the, the local the fish shop slash brewery or bar um, but we just came up for fresh air after pretty much squandering most of our uh, resources so we're, we're here to refresh and um, reheal and re-equip before we head back down to see what else is out there Tamily, yes. right yes Tamily, yeah, the Tamily. halfling uh, owner and proprietor of the otari fishery down at the docks and uh the other fun part was that Schmebulok was running around looting everything. <laughs> Anything the Kobolds had that was worth any sort of money lo was looted and grabbed. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's all mine. Yeah, and that was sold off for half price and uh, made, a, made a good amount of money. And uh, yeah, as you all left off, you decided to... You, you took the night, rested up, healed up a bit, and you then headed over, uh, met back up and headed over to the crow's cask in hopes of purchasing some, some potions and whatnot. Now, as oh, for the crow's... Go ahead. We rested? Yes. Uh, that has already been taken care of for you, uh, Sean. Krunk has been rested and healed up a bit. Okay. And as you get to the crow's cask, this is the artwork 
uh, that you'll see as you are standing outside of the uh, this tavern slash alchemist shop. You guys see that? Dude, mm -hmm. that is amazing mm -hmm. for the program. Yeah, it is. I've uh, I've been upping my skills and learned a, a, a few things after having a. a a couple t days of just not being able to produce anything, I was using certain features of Stable Diffusion wrong and uh, finally got it all working again. So I, had, I now have this nice little lovely scene here of an apothecary, plus uh, a few of the other buildings down the road that you've uh, been walking through. So you stand at the door uh, with a, let's see here, as was described before, a... Uh, Building with a group of drunk crows perched upon a leaky cask, which is a stone... Uh, let's see here. Uh, the sign on the door here for the crow's cask. And if anyone wants to roll maybe some kind of a... I don't know, what do we got here? History or local check or something? Let me take a look at you guys' skills here, because I still do not remember offhand the proficiencies you guys have. I mean, I've got medicine but I don't think that that would be applicable in this. Yeah, does anyone have a lore skill related to this? Hunting and undead only. Mm, so give me society check. That's the one I'm looking for, society. Straight roll. Ooh. Okay, definitely between Schmebulok and uh, Schmebulok here with occultism <laughs> and society. <laughs> You've probably ventured to the uh, crow's cask a few times before, and you know the proprietor here as the, uh, I guess we would say Kenku? I'm not entirely sure, but, uh, oh, hold on, let's see here. I want to show this to the players. Yeah, just show it. Did that show, or? Uh, we have, it. well, I did this a moment when I was playing around with it. It gives you the whole book of NPCs. Oh, so we, oh, we see what, we go. zero to thirteen of of the whole thing. So we want number two. There we go. I should have popped up another one. You have like Magaloi. a Magaloi. Yeah, Magaloi is a uh, looks like a Kenku, and you would know that they are a retired pirate. She enjoys experimenting with new drinks. She's also enthusiastic for customers to taste her new concoctions. And the Crow's Cask here is a brewery and a shrine to Caden Kalian, the god of heroes, bravery, and ale. That's my deity. Yes. I'm home. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> So yes, the uh, as you approach the door and, and look at the sign, which had once uh, said uh, reopening in uh, a week's time has magically turned into open. Come on in. <laughs> uh, speaking of ale, I'll be right back. I forgot my drink. Oh, all right. Well, I will enter. I will follow. All right. Uh, I'm sure everyone walks in. So as you walk in, yeah, again, the Crow's Cask is a tavern. So as you walk in here, there are places to sit down. Probably not too many places as this is also, you know, half the the main room here is, you know, a, a few tables and stalls, uh, some standing tables maybe. And then the other half of the building that goes back is behind uh, closed doors where you might see steam or bubbling concoctions uh, occasionally as... Uh, Malago uh, Magaloy here walks back and forth, and hearing the door open, Magaloy comes up to the front and uh, you know embraces you all from behind the count uh, the counter. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you all. It's a little bit early for some drink, but please take a seat or come to the bar here and let me know what you're looking for: beverages or potions. What's uh, what's your poison? So, wait, do you also have healing liquors? That is something I have been working on, but have not quite got the concoction down. Although, there are plenty of things to taste and sample here. If you were uh, worth uh, the, the salt here and wouldn't mind trying it out. She starts to get a little antsy and is about to run to the back uh, to go uh, to get something here for you to try out. Wait, who say free beer? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yes. 
Oh uh, yes, yes, yes. Very uh, free, free beer in the forms of samples here. If you, if you're curious to try out my most recent concoction of a healing ale, if it's not gonna heal you, at least get you drunk. Yes. All right. Well, let me go get you a couple. And she bends down and goes behind the bar to grab a, a couple little shot glasses, and then quickly runs to the back. It'll just be a moment. Make yourselves at home. And uh, here's some some menus if you're looking for something. And she slaps down. Uh, a couple menus onto the bar as she runs into the back to grab a couple things. Well, I'll, I'll peruse it while uh, keeping a wary eye on Crunk. <laughs> okay, so as blank, you look over the uh, the menu that Ma uh, Magaloy has. You see typical ales and meads, uh, grogs and whatnot. You know anything you could basically conjure up of stouts and, and what have you. And then halfway down the menu, you start to see potions as well. And it looks like Magaloy has been busy brewing all sorts of different potions. And currently for sale, there are uh, minor, lesser, and moderate healing potions. And she also has invisibility potions. Uh, potions of leaping, potions of resistance, potions of water breathing, and green wormling breath potions. Uh, you know, definitely you could ask about those and see what may or may not be in stock. All right, yeah, because I'm going to have to make sure that this water breathing potion isn't one that turns the oxygen in your lungs to water. <laughs> right? So we'll uh, stare at the menu for a minute or so. And, and then I will lean over to blank... Which section food? The booze? Top section. Food. Oh, food. Food. Well, this is a bar at, in an apothecary, so... I'm going to flip over to the back to see if there's anything about, like, herbs and stuff. Make them a nice salad. Oh, excuse me. Unfortunately, no. There's no... Uh, nothing on the back of the menu here. This is just a one-sided menu. And, uh, and I'll flip it back over and just shrug and say, sorry, Kronk, I mean, I, I, I guess that there is no food here. Yeah, and as you flip the menu back over, you hear some clanking, and uh, Magaloy comes rushing back in from the back rooms here with what appears to be, you know, a cask, a small cask with a spout on it. And she comes rushing oh. over. Ah, very good. Uh, I'm t I guess you've had a chance to take a look at the uh, the menu here. If you're any anything you're interested in, please let me know. Uh, all the beers and ales are uh, freshly brewed here, but some of my potions may be out of stock. You'll have to let me know what you're curious about, and I can definitely let you know. But uh, for those that are curious about my healing beers, and she tips the cask over and, and just hits the little spout and pours it into the shot glasses, uh, how, who's having some? And she, she looks at the two of you that had already... Yeah shown interest i'm gonna you know interject at this point and say uh sorry magaloy but my friend here was also wondering uh if there was any like food available to be eaten uh, it no. would actually help us with uh with testing out these drinks uh, unfortunately unfortunately only sell beers and potions here no food sadly you'll have to check out one of the other taverns and inns around the uh, around otari here for that sort of thing Drink with no food makes for angry bear in mourning. Oh, yes. We don't want an angry bear. <laughs> I might have I some... Tell you what, Crunk. Oh, I was going to say, I could just run out to the market real quick and grab some bread and stuff if he's hungry. <laughs> That's a point. So, uh, out of the four of you, who wants to try out this healing beer po uh, uh, sample? Oh, I totally, I totally grab it and just down it. Okay. So, she'll pour the... the, the Five, one for each of you and one for herself, and then you know, closes the the keg back up and sets it off onto the, the bar with a thud. For such a small, like uh, I don't know what you would call it, like a pony keg or something, one of the small ones. You know, cask, it, it, really? yeah, maybe a cask. Would it, however, the you know, couple like a foot tall or whatever, it has some some weight to it. It's kind of girthy. And uh, she goes, all right, well, whoever is interested, bottoms up. And she grabs one and then just tosses it back. Well, I mean, I'll shrug because I'm not going to benefit from it, but yeah, I'll tip it back. Hell yeah. Okay. I'm just going to watch. Okay, so for those that have taken a drink, go ahead and give me a 
constitution uh, or a uh, what, would it, what would it be here? A uh, fortitude save. Okay, blank's got a seventeen. Nothing yet. Oh, there we go. And Crunk with a 13. Excellent. You both passed a very, very minor fortitude save. Nothing too too crazy high. But uh, you, you both down it. And Crunk, you actually do heal one hit point. But it's nothing exciting. Uh, the flavors themselves are kind of earthy with a slight hint of sweetness. Which you might gather is probably from... Uh, you know, potions, or maybe trying to cover up some kind of a uh, a bitterness to the to the uh, the ale here itself. But beyond that, you don't really get much out of it. It looks like Megaloy might be <clears throat> excuse me might be onto something here, but there's some uh, refining that needs to be done in order for this this you know ale, this beer or ale and uh, healing potion combination to to go together and come to fruition. So it tastes like uh, a... Uh... This earring potion, little weak. Needs work. Ah, well, thank you for trying at least. I appreciate it. It's a bit of a strong flavor. Yes, uh, it's definitely something I've been working on. Hopefully I can get this, you know, a little more palatable. Sadly, uh, you know, the, the taste versus the idea of what it's trying to get across and accomplish here hasn't been quite... Uh, hasn't been quite where I've wanted it, sadly. Still needs some, some work, though. Have you tried a healing mead? Oh, that could be something. Maybe the mead would be better off. That's already... I will... She she grabs, like, a piece of paper and starts scribbling down. Yeah, yeah. What, what's your name again? Oh. Uh, Crunk. No, yeah, all right. So, Crunk, she's looking at you blank. <laughs> ah, Craig. And she writes... Uh, how do you spell that? Is that with a C or a K? Shoot, uh, Crunk, do you remember how to spell your name? Yo, yo, not Crunk? Who? Oh, jeez. It, it, cr. Okay, cr. Alright, okay, well. Okay, so K. Um. <laughs> right. I, I, I'll workshop it. I'll, I'll just, you know, want to get the name down. So in case I get something going here, I'll definitely have some people to uh, credit for this next concoction of, uh, you know, the crow's cask here. So. Honey, honey good for throat. Yes, that is very true. That is very true. Is there anything else I can help you find adventurers out with? Uh, yeah, it was actually, uh, we were interested in your potions as well. Oh, very good. You've had a chance to take a look at them. What are you looking for? I wanted to ask you how much the water breathing potion costs. Ah, water breathing is going to be 11 gold pieces, actually. That's uh, the standard price for that. And that would quite literally be all of my money. <laughs> <laughs> um... All right, well, how about the uh, the healing potions you have available, then? Mm. Well, I do have some minor and lesser in stock. Unfortunately, my moderate are all sold out at the moment. Uh, the minor is four gold pieces, while the lesser is 12. Mm. All right, I'll put eight gold coins on the counter, and I will say I'm purchasing two minor healing potions. Oh, very good. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm going to do the same. I will mimic him. I'm going to pick up a lesser healing potion. Alright, so for 12 gold pieces? Yeah. Okay. Now, I know there's some rules here with um, uh, Pathfinder and levels of uh, stuff, but because this is, you know, you guys have been level 1 for some time, a lesser healing potion is technically level 3, and I know there's some uh -oh. stuff where you, I don't think you can use stuff that is over your level, but I'm going to hand wave that for now, because that's why I'm, like, restricting some of the stuff that's here. Well, I mean, I have no problem trading that out for a three minor. 
Yeah, because that's more times that we can get knocked down and get back up again. They're never going to keep us down. True. Sure. Yeah, the, the funny part here is, like, technically right now, the only potion you guys could use at level 1 is minor healing potions. <laughs> which yeah. is kind of funny. But uh, as for the prices of everything else, which were listed on the, the menu, uh, minors are 4, lessers are 12, moderate are 50, the invisibility potions are 20, potions of leaping is 21, potions of resistance, lesser, is 45, water breathing, again, like I said, is 11, and green wormling breath potion is 30. Jeez. Are there minor potions in the items table? They should yeah, be. Yeah, it's under healing potion bracket minor. Ah, thank you, uh, thank you, Scott. Yeah, so yeah, I'll, I'll take uh, three of the minor healing potions instead of the lesser. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna ask for a weird potion. Do you have a potion of shared memories? Oh, that is a rare one indeed, my little friend. And she looks at you for a bit. Probably recognizing you uh, possibly coming in once or twice. Uh, no, I haven't had any... I haven't been able to, you know, sas satisfactorily create that one. Uh, what might you be looking for that for? Well, it's, it's, it's sometimes we've been, we've been having issues with talking to some of the uh, things we encounter, so I figured this might be a way to... Uh... To, to, to convey things to creatures or, or people we run across and may not be able to speak the same languages. Right. Or speak at all. Yes, well, that is tricky. I might be able to requisition a potion. It'll take quite some time to get it through my sources and... and uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't think of it. But anyways, yes. Uh, it will take quite some time to get it through through my chain, my you know resource chains and whatnot. But I can keep an eye out for that. What was that again you were looking for? Potion of Shared Memories. Potion of Shared Memories. Let me write that down. And what is your name again, my f uh, fine fellow? Mepilock. Ah, very good. That is right. Uh, correct. Thank you. You jogged my memory. Mebulak. All right, very good. Is there anything else I might be able to get you? Nope, very thank good. you for here. All right, very good. And uh, she goes to shake both Crunk and Blank's hands. Uh, do you reach out and shake her hand and thank she's like well thank you once again for uh for trying out my my co my concoction here sure yeah yeah i'll shake her hand back okay as she shakes your hand she slides you an additional minor healing potion as a uh, a wink and a thank you for trying out the uh the concoction she's created there we go thank yeah. you lucky guys yeah <laughs> There was all a do is accept a drink from a lady. That's uh -huh. all. Yeah. A bird lady. I mean, do uh, Kenku in Pathfinder have the similar mimicry, mimicry sort of trait as D and D? Let me take a look here. I'm not entirely sure. Just, I'm just curious. It's not not critical. Just just curious. Because that's a really weird line of dialogue that she's had. If she was able to do all that, next time she sees Crunk, it's. You know, the funny thing is, is that there is nothing in, like, there's nothing about Kenku, at least that I can find, for a beast or a monster in uh, Pathfinder. I wonder, let me see something here. Let me check the journal. playable here. characters. Oh, right. All right. Let's take a look then. Tengu? For... Is that the closest thing? Yeah. Te they're called Tengu. Yeah. Uh, Tengu. Tengu. Okay. The Tengu shopkeeper. Uh, yeah, they they just have common in Tengu, so. Yeah, so they're they're normal. They're not trying to, be a soundboard. Right. Thank God, because that would be extremely difficult to own a business. <laughs> <laughs> and make my life RPing miserable. <laughs> not that hard if you have the soundboard set up, as as you know. 
right? Yeah. All right, well, if there's anything else, uh, Megaloy goes back to business of cleaning up and, and writing and jotting down some notes. She goes, uh, she's, she says, well, if there's anything else I can help you with, just let me know. Otherwise, uh, you know, have a seat, take a rest, or get back to whatever adventures you're off to. Once again, thank you so much for testing out one of my concoctions. Not a problem. So, where are you guys headed to next? Somewhere in town, or are you heading back down into the fishery? I did want to see if there's uh, someone who can let me buy some more spells, or potentially add them to my book. Hmm. And uh, since it's a new day, I'd like to try to identify this scroll, this unusual scroll that I have. Okay. I get, I get that one shot per day, right? Yes. All right, let me go ahead and get to your inventory. And where we got that hiding? Should be under uh, consumables. Yep, there we go. Yeah, so identify magic. Does that work? Uh... If you have the spell, what, what would the identify magic do? Or, I just see it under exploration as an action. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, let me see here. Your actions. Exploration. Uh, once you've discovered that an item, location, or ongoing effect is magical, you can spend 10 minutes to try and identify the particulars of its magic. If your attempt is interrupted, you must start over. And let's see here. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. So this, I believe, is the same thing we're doing. Yeah, we're, we're kind of doing an identify item skill check with Arcana or Nature, whatever of the four. I posted it in chat to click on one of those links. Boom. Oh. Dice rolled privately. We got ourselves a natural 20 here on that identify. <laughs> Shoot, nice. I'll take your word for it because I have question marks. Oh, okay. That's funny. Let me see here. Can I... Yeah, I'll just reveal to everyone. You ended up rolling a critical success with plus 12. So not only did you crit, you also got a uh, 10 over the, the check as well. So it is a critical success, and you learned all about the item. So you found out that the item itself is a scroll of... Where did it go? Magic Missile. You have a scroll of Magic Missile in your hands. Sweet. Very nice. Now you're unstoppable. Now I can cast double magic missile. Pew pew. Uh, actually, I was going to uh, visit a place where I could purchase weapons, whether it be like a blacksmith or a uh, weapon shop proper. Uh, tell me again what you wanted to do. I was looking at something real uh. quick. Sorry, I was going to visit a weapon shop when there was a chance. Yes, there is the Blades for Glades up here at the northern end of uh, Otari. Roughly here in this building. All right. And this is Otari's primary smithy, which sells armors and weapons in addition to saws and axes. Uh, let's see here. Uh, if you want to give me a society check... I can tell you some, some stuff about this. It'll be a low DC for you because, you know, being a former sheriff or a, a short-time sheriff of the area. I, I was going to say, you know, expecting a good roll with a... Eh, okay, <laughs> not terrible. Good enough. <clears throat> you know, this is the primary smithy in town. And, you know... They craft all sorts of stuff of saws, axes, and other useful tools, especially uh, for the lumber trade here in uh, Otari, which is off to the east uh, over yonder. And uh, the owner of the Blades for Glades is a uh, misanthropic man named Carmen Rajani. Let's see here. Let me uh, click his image, and I will show that to you guys. So you should have so many hammers. All yeah. the hammers. <laughs> he's got quite a lot of hammers here. Stop. He's Never happy to good. He's happy to sell uh, a sword and split an orc as a split an orc as a hatchet to fell a tree. Well, he's happy to sell a sword to split an orc as a hatchet to fell a tree. Alright, whatever. 
Uh, yes. Yeah, so yeah, he, he's, he's just as happy selling a hatchet and a wood cutting axe, basically, as he and is. To... Oh, to split an orc as a hatchet. Yeah, okay. to be racist against orcs. Gotcha. Yeah, very. So, uh, Krunk <laughs> might not be too friendly with you. Who knows? But yes, uh, you could head over there and speak with uh, uh, Carmen here if you'd like. Otherwise, you know, we can. If you have something you want to talk to him, otherwise it'll just be a quick uh, exchange, and you can just uh, buy yeah, or sell no, this whatever is you just want. A, this is just to purchase something. Okay. Yeah. So then, whatever you it's want to purchase, gonna, go right it's ahead. It's gonna be like, yeah, it's gonna be like a. Uh, I just gotta find it first. I'm looking through the list for a uh, basic uh, martial bludgeoning weapon. Okay. What? You know, for the skeletons. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. The skellyman. Let's see here. Items. If we go to the compendium. Oh yeah, no, I'm trying to use the weapon filters, and it's 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 terrible. Let's see here. Uh, what kind of bludgeoning weapon are you looking for? Like, I would just take a regular club. I've got three gold to spend, so you know I'm a baller on a budget. I can I can loan you money if you need it. Uh, a no, club no. is free. Yeah, I want something with a damage die, though. Yeah, that's funny. The, uh, the club is zero gold pieces. I know, because a club is literally just like a branch you pick up from the ground. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Filtering. I want something more refined than that. You know, I, I am a you know supposed to be representing a crusader. Well, you have the, the flail for eight silver pieces, which is a martial melee weapon, part of the flail group, and if you crit with it, it knocks the target prone. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, it's a mace with a slinky. What more could you want? <laughs> right? Yeah, but they have none chaku. Alright, so there's the flail. You could also get a... Hmm, a bow staff. Or a light hammer for three silver pieces. Are you looking for one-handed or two? Uh, one-handed. Okay. So actually, yeah, I'll, I'll probably stick with the flail then, since you know what? Yeah, if people come up to me, I'm going to knock them down. Okay, so eight silver pieces, and you can easily just get the flail. If you just search right. in the compendium at the top and hit flail, it'll be the second option there. You just drag and drop and subtract the eight silver for that. Actually, it says one gold on the compendium here. Really? Huh. That's weird. I'm seeing eight silver pieces elsewhere. Just go with the eight silver pieces. All right. All right. So I'm, I'm gonna make a new friend. You going up to uh, the the blades and glades as well? Absolutely. Yeah, you. All right. What about Severish and Schmebulok? Schmebulok, you said you were going looking for somewhere. Yeah, I think last time we said there is there could be someone that sells magically spells, and I'm just looking for a couple cantrips just to pad out my spell book. Hmm. Well, go ahead and give me a uh, society check as well. Ooh, pardon Come on, me. big money. Oh wow, seventeen. All right. Yeah, you are pretty. You, you know this one particular spot, Odd Stories, and I put you right in front of it here. Odd Stories is this building right here. And in this place, Odd Stories, is a bookstore run by a fiction-loving wizard. And the wizard, Morlabint, who I will give you an I image here in a second. This is Morlabint. Cool. Okay. Kind of looks like Franklin. You know that that turtle, that animated turtle. I think so. From the kids' show. There. Uh, let's see here. Morlabent specializes in fanciful fiction, but he's uh, but he and his husband also sell textbooks, teaching tools, and scrolls of wizard spells. So definitely the right spot to go uh, go to. What I want to hear. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Morlabent is an incredibly well-read and can help the heroes decipher tomes and other ancient or unusual languages they might encounter in their adventures. He eagerly purchases rare books and the hero the, that the heroes you, know, you guys can come across, hoping to resell them at a profit. 
Let's see here. Uh, yeah, you'd know he'd be a wizard, and he does sell his services. So if you're curious to talk to Morlebent here, you can see about what he might be able to help you out with. Absolutely. I think unless someone wants that uh, scroll of magic missile, I might try to use that to barter for a different spell. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Um, anyone else interested? Yeah, it might not be good for anyone else primarily. Uh, what kind of what kind of spellcaster is Saverish? Like, what uh, what genre of magic? Is it a cult or arcane? I don't remember. Primal, isn't it? Oh, that's right. Yeah, I think it is primal because of his yeah. Adalon. Yep. Okay. So yeah, she might be like, you're basically the only one that can do anything with that that scroll, really. Gotcha. Then I, yeah, that's that's what I like to do. I like to talk to this guy, possibly barter that scroll. All right. So you walk on into the odd stories and talk to Morlebint. And as you can see, Morlebint is sitting in a rather worn chair surrounded by books stacked on their sides and uh, pushed into all sorts of, uh, you know, bookshelves and cases and what have you. Scrolls all over the place. The place is tidy, but it's a chaotic tidy. Uh, you know, there, there's a smell of tobacco in the air. Maybe Morlebent was smoking from a pipe or something and enjoying uh, the early morning readings as you guys are taking care of uh, your, your stuff here in the, you know, probably around between 8 and 10 o'clock uh, in the morning. And as you walk in, Morlebent uh, closes, gently closes the book he's looking at and looks over to you. Well, hello, my uh, uh, fine fellow here. Is there anything I can help you with? Yes, I, uh, I like to recount sort of our, our recent adventure. I'd oh. like to show him the scroll of magic missile we have and see if he's interested in uh, a trade. Ah, oh, I am always interested in a fellow wizard's adventures. I uh, definitely am not interested in going out myself, but... Uh, if you would recount the tale and, uh, you know, listening and uh, taking in all the details of what you've been, you know, discovering underneath Otari, uh, Morlebent it comes out with a surprising that there is something down below, but occasionally we have been feeling rumblings, and I've been talking to my husband about this, and he doesn't believe me, but, you know, uh, to each their own. So, you said you had a scroll here uh, that you're looking to trade, huh? Yes, scroll magic missile. Ah, magic missile. All right. Well, that is a very uh, basic spell. I'm guessing you already have this one, don't you? And pointing Correct. to your pointing yes. to your spell book. <laughs> yes, my my very thick spell book. Yes, mostly empty spell book. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, hmm. Are you looking for an even trade or uh, a trade up, so to say? Uh, I think an even trade for now. All right. Well, I get too ahead of myself. I can certainly trade you out for this scroll of magic missile. I'm sure I can do something with this. What exactly are you looking for? That's the question, isn't it? Um, Featherfall, if possible. That's a level one spell. Featherfall. He starts looking around and pointing at a, a couple different books, and he puts his his finger to his lips, and he's tapping. He goes, hmm, well, yeah, Featherfall, Featherfall. Ah, yes, just a moment, and he rushes off to one of the bookcases and grabs one book that looks pretty much identical with no markings on the outside whatsoever. They're all, you know, kind of bound in these red, red colorations, and some of them can be rather thick, uh, as per the one book that Morlebent had slammed, or not necessarily slammed, but gently closed, uh, that was on his lap, and puts it off to the side on, on the table. This, you could probably guess it's his personal spell book. But a, as for uh, these other ones, he grabs it, pulls it off, and then he starts flipping through, and then you hear him just tear the page out of the book. <laughs> I, I don't know, what kind of a reaction does that does that give Shmebulak as he's tearing the book? The shock and appalled. <laughs> yes, he goes. Yes, I I can hear you over there. It's uh, no big big matter. I have plenty of these. And as you kind of gather and you look, uh, you, as he's ripping the the page out of the book, you can see that you know the markings are exactly identical 
to the next page behind it. <laughs> so he is not afraid to just dismantle these. And he, he takes it, he rolls it up, and he come, comes back over to you after returning the book into the bookshelf. Well, you uh, want to take a trade here? Let me, let me take a look at your, your spell here, your scroll, and hands you the one. This isn't his main spell book. This is this is the one he sells. It's a tearaway edition. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so with one open hand and handing the spell of Featherfall to you. But yeah, I'll hand him the magic missile. Okay. And he takes it, hands you off the Featherfall spell, opens it up, he goes, Oh, this is Interesting markings. Oh, this will take me some time. This is a uh, quite a good find. Thank you for bringing this here. I've uh, I've appreciate it. My pleasure. No harm done. Even trade. Well, if there's anything else you would uh, care for me, I do sell my spells as well. It will take some time to uh, you know trade them off here, but beyond this one here, I'm sure you know if you're ever in the uh, the market for more spells, you know where to stop. I asked for one more. What are you looking for? Uh, let's see, magic weapon. And that's another first level spell, I take it? Correct, yep. Okay. Yes, this one is going to cost you three gold pieces for magic weapon, and it's going to take about an hour's worth of your time. Do you have the time to spend? I d won't know until I get back to my party. So um, in my inventory, I have the Featherfall scroll. And mm -hmm. I assume I would just take a magic, mis a magic weapon scroll as well. That's alright. Say that one again? I'm sorry. Oh, if I drag the spell from the companion into my inventory, it turns it into a scroll. Okay. Uh, yeah, you'll have to... Let's see here. You'll probably have to do something with uh, your character sheet here. Let me get you... Let's... Or... Because I, I would have to spend time to learn these, and I just don't have the time now. Right. Yeah, because that's going to take... Uh, an hour's worth of time to scribe that in. Yeah, you'd have to go into spell preparations and then... I, I think we're good. I have the two items in my inventory as a reminder, the two scrolls. Okay. Um, so when we have downtime, I should be able to just drag that into my prepared spells list. Right. If I'm successful. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah, so that's it for me uh, for the shop. Uh, thank the shopkeeper and uh, be sure to inform him that uh, he'll hear the rest of our adventure once we're done. Ah, oh, fantastic. I definitely look forward to hearing your tales of it. high adventure. And, uh, yeah, keep our town safe down below. I appreciate it. And he goes and returns to his rather worn but luxurious looking chair and grabs his spell book again, paying you virtually no mind, it seems, now that uh, the transaction is done. Perfect. All right. So, uh, Krunk. Yes, sir. You were going to Blades for Glades, huh? Yes. All right, so then. What are you after at, uh, at accompanying uh, Blank to Blades for, Blades for Glades here? Oh, you, you blacksmith. Yes. And uh, as you get up to the blacksmith here, Carmen, take, after having sold uh, to Blank, he kind of looks at he looks at you from aside, having hear you know having heard uh, heard your your voice, only like a half turn, and then just goes back to whatever he was doing, like clanging away at the uh, at the anvil that he's working at currently, paying you no mind. Oh, him, hard hearing. M me go closer. Mm -hmm. Me, me, me yelling ear. Hello, you are blacksmith. Yes. And he he jumps aside. Not necessarily jumps, but he does pivot real quick, and kind of brings his his smithing hammer up in a a very defensive g uh, gesture. Look, I don't know what you're after, but I definitely don't like orcs. So why don't you take your business elsewhere? But you, you weapon person, man, 
me me need weapon. No, I'm uh, halfling halfling beer lady need help me helping. Uh, what kind of help does Tamily need? Uh her thing eating rats, we killing rats. Me need weapon. And he looks around. Uh, what kind of what weapons do you currently have? Do you have anything for a weapon at the moment? Uh, a long spear and a couple of javelins. He, he points at the the weapons you currently have. Looks like you got enough capable to kill some rats. And he kind of turns back to what he's doing and starts banging away at the anvil. What a jerk! <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll I'll look over at blank, kind of pout me. Me just wanted Metalsmith to make me club. And, and I'll walk out. He stops for a second and there's you get this this sense of like what the hell did he just ask a metalsmith for? <laughs> <laughs> and, and he he just kinda like an aluminum baseball bat. He, he, I'm, looking, I'm looking for a wooden great club. I figured the smith would be a great place to go. He throws the hammer down. And he goes, you come to a blacksmith's for a club? Are you joking with me right now? I'll, I'll point over at blank. Him got weapon. Yeah, but, you know, yeah, and he goes, yes. The outstanding sheriff, your former sheriff here, bought himself a flail. It's metal. I make things of metal. Oh. Um. You know, you find uh, me. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Crunk, but uh, <laughs> there there is the uh the Druid Circle. Perhaps they could help you find what you seek. Oh, wait. Their circle. Yeah. I'd imagine that they'd probably have something akin to weapons made natural weapons made of wood. Mm. Yeah, I'll, I'll point them. I'll point them up like above, above, up on the ridge. Up there, there's going to be a circle of stones around a pond, and uh, that's where you can usually find them. But it's it's a bit of a hike because you have to go around a long and windy path to get across the river. Or you could don't try to climb it, Crunk. Crunk, you've made this journey plenty of times to the stone pond that <clears throat> that uh, Blank is talking about, and you know that's a good couple hours of of a walk here out of town and then up along the winding path. Mm-hmm. I have everything I need, so I'll join you if you want. About, about um, how long a walk is that, Andy? Uh, out and back, you're probably looking at anywhere between two to three hours from where you are currently. I don't, I don't think we have that much. That's, um, I, I will turn to leave, and I will kind of lean in and loudly whisper to Blank, You, you should go. Him not good Smith can't even make club, and I don't leave. <laughs> you hear him go, "Excuse me, I can make anything." <laughs> <laughs> can't think uh, I can't can't make a club, and he starts banging away. He grabs like he gets all really just flustered and, and pissed off, and he starts banging away at something. He goes, "You just wait a minute, you'll see here," uh, and he starts banging away, making making a rather. <laughs> Rather nice metal club. Hammering on a broom hand. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'll leave and go look for everyone else. Alright, so what kind of club were you looking for? Just a. A, a, a wooden great club. It's like a tree trunk with a with the narrow me, handle. Yeah, me, me do dead, can't use metal. Oh, yeah. uh, metal <laughs> armor, no, but metal weapons, yes. There's a weird distinction about that. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, because I don't know about Pathfinder druids, but they can use scimitars, as far as, as far as I'm aware. 
because say, the scimitar is also farming using, equipment. Yeah, I was going to say, you're also using a spear. It's got a metal tip. Well, I mean, you could argue that's a stone tip spear, I guess. Or mm -hmm. even like a burnt fire or fire hardened tip. Okay, so if you spend, let's say, about a half hour watching this guy angrily bang away at metal, he does end up creating a metal great club. But he go he 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 once he's finished and he's just profusely sweating and just angry. He goes, "There's your great club." He throws it down on the on the counter, and he he it's looks a Lewis at little fucking slagger. <laughs> he's like uh, he looks at it, he's like two gold pieces. <laughs> Shit, sure. Uh, as long as you're sure, I'm. Uh, as long as you're sure, I can wield it. Sure, yeah. I'll say sure. All right, I will. The great club wields him instead. <laughs> <laughs> it has a fifteen bulk. And uh, Blanker, are you still there, or have you moved on by now? Oh, I was watching on in amazement at this point. Okay. So, yeah, you, you both stand there. And he looks at you, Blank, and he goes, uh, he goes, oh, hey, yeah, uh, when you see Tamerly. And he starts to ease up a bit. He's like, tell him Carmen said hi. <laughs> but then he well, just kind of sneers at Krunk. Uh, I'll take my little gray club and, and, and be happy with that. <laughs> Dare Doctor goes, with every swing, he moves ten feet. <laughs> Does that count as reach, then? <laughs> I vote yes. For all intents and purposes, you have yourself a great club, Sean, for, for Krunk there. You could just... He yeah. auto-cleaves all targets on every hit. If anything requires, you know, anything... Including party with... members, that's the problem. Oh, boy. Yep. Uh, if, if anything ever comes up that we have to deal with metal, then, you know, we'll have to deal with that, like, if there's any kind of uh, oozes or whatnot. But, for the time period, uh, for the time being, you have yourself a great club. Severish, uh, is there anything you wanted to do during this whole downtime here? Or are you uh, good? I have everything I need. Okay. Well then, I suppose you're all heading back to the fishery now, or is there something, anything else you all wanted to do? Uh, I'm good right now. Yeah, I'm good. We can head back. Okay. During this time period, uh, Mike, for blank, you could be healing everyone back to full with your uh, with your lay on hands focus. Like I said. Yeah, I, I don't want them to rely on me too much. So, no, we're not going to be doing that. I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, thanks to blank's ability to do this and spending a couple hours here by by this time after everything's said and done it's probably 10 10 in the in the morning uh Shmebulok and crunk go ahead and heal yourselves back up to full with blank's help and uh praying to Saren ray right or is it phrasma phrasma uh, phrasma yes uh so would i have to like hit the uh the daily prepper or not daily preparation but the rest thing nope nope uh, you would have, it would have just been a cycle that we would have done, like, every ten minutes you could have done your okay. prayers while you were waiting and watching and whatnot. So, uh... All right, then. Let me get, I'll get Shmebulok back up to full as well. Max hit points. All right. Sweet. Oh, you got it? Got, got what? All right, I got you. You're back to full hit points. Sweet. All right, so, go ahead and uh, drag yourselves back down to the fishery if you're going back in. Oh no! <laughs> right on top of each other. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And unless there's, did you want to talk to Tamley, or are you just heading right through down into the the basements again? Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, tell her that the blacksmith said hi and then sneered at Crunk. Ah, uh, and you, you uh, meet back up with Tamley briefly as she's, you know, in this case, since it's during the day, Tamley is very business and she, you know, she's issuing orders back and forth to people coming in and out. And she goes, ah, I don't know what to do with these fish. We can't have them down in the basement. And she's like really kind of surprised. She's like, and then she hears blank. She hears you say that to her as she's uh, caught in, in with business and people running back and forth to her. She goes, oh, well, come and come and said hi, huh? Well, uh, she she 
like really loosens up a bit uh, from her business sense, more similar to what you know her as from uh, the, the Knights events and the, the gambling and the gaming area. She's like, well, if you uh, find yourself back there, why don't you, uh, why don't you tell him I said hi as well? All right. Hey, yeah, that's something. All right. And then she just kind of snaps back into work. She was like, oh, put those goddamn barrels over there. Keep them away from the basement. So, anything else you guys want to say? As uh, Grun is definitely sweeping, and he, he doesn't seem to be accomplishing anything, but Grun is there sweeping away, doing kobold things. <laughs> Keep up the good work, even though he doesn't understand me, and just give him a thumbs up. Yeah, and he just kind of looks over, and he's like, ah, ah. He gets this like, weird thumbs up, and his tongue's kind of like dangling out the side of his mouth. <laughs> must be keeping him drunk uh, I think that we're pretty much uh, accomplished for where we want to be and we're going to head back in mm -hmm. I bought my marbles, I'm happy alright, well then I will shift us directly down to floor 2 instead of uh, uh, having you guys, yeah we're going to tr transition right down to floor 2 as you make your way back down unless you wanted to stop at that one shrine that you hadn't the alt yeah the Cthulhu looking altar yeah unless you wanted to go there uh, we will just transition right down to floor two. What, Anyone what do you want, want to, to mess with the old gods? Yeah, why not? Sure. All right. <laughs> All right. Everyone's on board. So be it. Floor one it is, if I can get to it. Sorry, Sean. No, it's cool. No, I meant for uh, when we get killed. No, that's cool. <laughs> it is. All right. I tried to kill us in like the first session, so I can't be mad if you try and kill us all. <laughs> okay, where are you guys at? Over there? All right. Oh, oh you were teleporting us. Yeah, Sorry. let's see if I can... Just drag yeah, you guys over there. There are a bunch of barriers that are in our way that we can't pass ourselves. Yeah. Sure, we can. We just have uh, to. And uh, of course, for for sake of the, the uh, <laughs> stop moving over here. For, for the sake of the cliff over here, I will uh, summon Koth at the bottom. Right, because this is a 10 foot ledge here, too, right? Yes. Yeah. Hey, did that spider come back? Still no. Still dead? Still dead. Oh. <laughs> okay. Get that. All right. I am going to clip that. Oh, where did it go? Oh, let's see here. No, I don't want that. I want. There we go. All right. Uh, I will be uh, having my shield and the short sword prepared, by the way. Okay. All right, so yes, there is a small 10-foot ledge that you guys have to climb up to get up to the uh, the ledge here. So uh, if you want, want to do that, you know, we could do, like you said you had done before, using Koth as a stepping stool. You can uh, go ahead and give me a climb check. Let's see here real quick. Athletics. Yeah, I'll pull that up in a second. And let's see here. There we go. It's in the chat. Yeah. Okay, Krunk and Shmebulok, you make your way up, no problem, using uh, using Koth as a stepping stool. And does that mean we are in the room or just on top of this floor here? On top of the ledge, you can definitely go uh, and move on in to make room as people go on. Uh, Blank, you make no, no movement. You're going to have to give me another... Uh, athletics check. All right. 
<laughs> uh, I'll, let's see. I'll stand at the top of the ledge and hold my, my club down for him to help him climb up. Uh, with the critical failure of uh, Blank's check there, unfortunately. Wait, no, wait, that was uh, excuse me. Failure. That was Severish. Excuse me, that was Severish. Severish failed that one critically. And <laughs> <laughs> you go to step up on Koth and you just kind of bump, but he he's wriggles and gets a little annoyed with everyone stepping on him and you just slip and fall on your ass back down to the ground. <laughs> How many... Shmebulocks are there here? God. <laughs> <laughs> I like copied way too many. They're coming out of the walls, man. Uh, <laughs> Need yeah. more Sinzarn. So after... Yes. After a little bit of time, you guys can definitely get up here. But, you know, Severish... Uh, falls on his ass real briefly. There we go. There it is. Okay. So yes, everyone eventually makes their way up, and you find yourselves in this uh, this for, uh, forgotten shrine here. So once again, uh, for the little bit of flavor here, the ancient wooden doors creak open on rusty hinges, revealing a ruined chamber. Mold and rot stain every surface. On the far side of the room is a stone statue of a giant squid, its tentacles reaching towards an altar in the center of the chamber. The scum covers almost everything, but it hasn't touched the silver bowl sitting atop the stone altar. The water in the bowl is perfectly clear. And they're talking about this right here. So, what would you like to do while you're in this shrine here? Uh, I'll inspect the statue. Okay. As you inspect the statue, go ahead and roll me a religion check, please. Ah, that is just enough. You look over this squid here, and you realize, uh, thinking back to your trainings as a, uh, a champion, that this is actually a shrine dedicated to Gozra, the god of nature and the fury of the ocean. What is it? What it's doing down here? <laughs> you have no idea. But, again, uh, the tentacles of Gozra here are reaching out to the silver bowl behind you. Well, I will uh, pick up the bowl then and uh, try placing it in the tentacles, if it will. Okay, you grab the bowl and lift it, and placing it in the tentacles does actually nothing. What about dipping the tentacle in the water in the bowl? No. Nope. Again, you, 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 you try to dip it in, but nothing really happens to it, although whatever grime and scum that has formed on the tentacles of the, uh, the statue here seem to have cleared off, and, and when you bring the bowl back, the tentacle itself seems to have been pristinely cleaned. Guys, look, the color changes in water. Uh, you know what, in that case, I will, uh, I'll clean the statue. You know, if this is a, a deity that's, you know, accepted by, you know, in the Pantheon, then, uh, forming a service might actually be a boon for us in here. Hmm. Okay. So you spend a little bit of time cleaning the water out of this this uh, bowl here and the statue does clean up nice the funny thing is is that for as much water as you take out of it the level of water in the bowl itself doesn't drop it's, it maintains the same level okay well I'll uh, I'll tip the bowl over just a little bit yeah it splashes out but once you level it back off you can see that the water in the bowl has dripped, uh, you know, dropped a little bit, but then it, it starts to fill back up, giving no indication of where the water's coming from. All right, well, I think it's time for a good old-fashioned water fight, guys. <laughs> Anyone else you know, want to do something wait. while Blank's doing this? I'd like to take a, just a small, like, uh, just cut my hand drink it, water drink and, it. and take a sip. Okay. So, you go ahead and come over to drink the water. The water itself is amazingly refreshing. Had you been hurt at all, this would have healed you uh, hit points. It, it 
has a similar taste to some of the the healing potions you've you've had. On top of that, I'm gonna need you to make a fortitude save for me, please. Oh goody! Okay, with a 17, unfortunately, you feel while you are refreshed from the initial drink, you feel suddenly. Uh, like the ocean's waves crash against you and in your stomach and you suddenly get a sensation of feeling seasick and you are overcome with salt water sickness for the next hour. Oh, yay. Oh, so it's an everlasting potion of salt water. <laughs> Anyone else care to take a sip from the, uh, the bowl? No. I'm going to go back to what I was planning on doing and uh, splashing the statue. Okay. Just like the full bowl of water. Yes, as you continue splashing after Seravish takes a sip from it and suddenly is like, oh, I don't, I don't know about this. Uh, you know, you, you do splash and clean off the, uh, the, the shrine here to Gozra. And you do feel a slight... Wave of, you know, there's just this positive feeling wash over you. As if maybe Phrasma or Gozra has uh, given you some kind of a sense of thanks for cleaning off the, hey. the statue. Uh, all you hear is, choose the form of the destructor. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, that being done, you know, I, I just thought of something. I I do have a skill in medicine, and I do have an herbalism kit, thanks to Shmebulok, so our healer's tools. Uh, is there any way that I could possibly aid, hit, aid him with his uh, sickness? Hmm, that is a good question. I don't believe there's anything you, you could do to help him out right now with this. It's just going to have to run its course. Yeah, I don't have anything else that could help them. Well, I'll, uh, I'll help Saravish steady himself and... <clears throat> I don't want to take the bowl. Okay, so you put the bowl back in its place? Yep. All right. Make it make him healing mud. <laughs> ah, yes, the healing mud. Him him eat that, feel better. Hmm, maybe, maybe. Anything I, else you want to I do? I'll, I'll turn to the rest of the party. It's like, you know, we, we know the nature of the bowl. I don't know if it would extend past this altar here, but... Uh, like, we could just take it out of here and it becomes like a tarnished silver bowl. We don't know. I say leave it here. Uh, Saravish tried it and is now sick, so I don't see any benefit in bringing it with us. Everyone else agree? Yes. Sure. All right then. You guys make your way out of the the shrine here, then, and back into the alleys to wake, work your way down into the second floor of the uh, the fishery here and the, these tunnels. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's check something here. Okay, so there's no no walls there. Oh, I'll, I'll lean on cough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not too worried about uh, checks, so go ahead and just you know work your way down, uh, down through here. Look at them all moving around. It's so funny. <laughs> I'm gonna avoid this. Do these have anything on them? 
Just those spike traps. Yeah, the the rudimentary spike traps. Yeah, once you guys all make your way to here, we will uh, transition down. All right, I gotta check something real quick. That there, okay. And I need, I'm just gonna drag you up here real quick everyone right back in there I need to copy you guys your guys's tokens real quick uh, what's the marching order who's first second third and fourth uh, I'll be in the lead I'll That's be at the scary. back I'll come up second well Kyle will come up second and I'll come up behind him and where was Crunk like right before the back I'm just in front of Schmebulock. Okay. And I gotta get uh, your Adalon out. Okay. Alright, and I gotta do one more thing. Where is that hiding? There we go. Okay. All right. You guys are being pulled to floor two. At least you should be anyways. Mm-hmm. Ah, there we go. Okay, it's playing the right music. All right, everyone's here? Yep. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not quite. Oh, all right. It says 100%, but it's not. Oh. oh there we go. Oh, uh, hello. Okay. So, the stairs spiral down deep into the earth before ending in a chamber that looks like it's been prepared specifically to defend against intruders. On one side of the room, a table has been turned on its side to provide cover, while on the other, crates and barrels have been piled up to create a second barrier. While you guys come down the stairs here, I need to know what your perception DCs are, which is going to be your perception plus 10. So you want to throw that into chat or let me know. I have a couple things I need to take care of here. Perception. Oh, it's our uh, initiative on the side there. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Oh, wait, we're doing initiative? Nope. No, he's no. just rolling stuff we can't see to scare us. Oh, okay. We are not afraid. Yeah. <laughs> you always... have no power here. Okay, so I've got a 13 for Cerevish and 11 for Koth. 14 for Blank. So it's our... No, don't Just roll it. Like a, so no, it would be fourteen for Schmebulock. Okay. So it's basically yeah. it's a plus for your uh, your perception die. Yeah. When you make your perception check. Yeah. On yeah. the uh, well, left side of the, your character sheet. Uh, Fifteen then. Plus ten, you said. Yep. T ten plus your modifier. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. So you guys can come on down into the room here. Wall. 
Give yourselves one full movement action as you come into okay, the so spoiler room. There. Actually, I can't see until the light comes in. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one of the problems. <laughs> this place is like pitch black darkness here. Would you say that right here is uh, possible to be stood on or stood by? Over there? Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Let me move you back real quick. Yeah, I don't see why you couldn't. Okay, just want to make sure. Because it was kind of like the barrel was in the space. Okay. Uh, for Koth, that would be a barrier, so you'd have to go around the table. He couldn't really stand there. That's why I went around the barrels here. Let me hang on. Okay. And I have my, uh, like I said, my uh, the short sword and the uh, shield out. Okay. I'm going to put you back here real quick to this one spot. Uh, Krunk, as yes. you come around the corner and you're surveying the room here, you happen to notice off to the right here, I'd say right about here, through the barrels, you see a slightly different colored kobold hiding in wait with different armors and gear. And as you make eye contact with him, he jumps out, screams something in Draconic, and goes to attack you guys next week. Oh, we'll be back next week to uh, begin this encounter here, folks, as we leave off with a sudden, sudden battle of kobolds in wait and our party being attacked by uh, surprised uh, kobolds here, kobold scouts. Shoot, I almost uh, stepped on them. La Lancelot's charge from Monty Python. <laughs> <laughs> Just for a week running in place. All right, so we will leave off on this slight cliffhanger of a battle for next week as we uh, as we finish up here for today's and uh, to this week's game of uh, the beginner's box for Pathfinder Second Edition. Thank you all so much for joining us. This has been a fun night here of uh, doing a little shopping and getting to know some of the people of Otari and you know what you're defending them against. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll get into the action next week. Uh, for uh, for more of the beginner box here as we learn and stumble our ways through Pathfinder 2nd Edition. So, with that, I would like to say thank you to Hair Doctor and Candy Holic for, uh, as well as Trade 11 for being in the chat tonight. Thank you all so much for stopping by and, and watching this with us. Uh, for anyone that also watches this all the way to the end, thank you so much as well. You're all amazing people. And this is me and my friends and family here for uh, the D&D CR Exposed YouTube channel. Thank you all so much for joining us and saying goodnight. Bye-bye. Good night, everybody.